grading can take up a lot of time. And uh, I've found in 20 years of education that grading has very limited value. Now, grading in the sense of giving a point value to something. I want to invest 80% of my energy into giving feedback and scaffolding the learner experience, interacting with, uh, with students. I found that a lot of, a lot of folks, they, they grade a lot of things that don't need to be graded. And so I think that's where it starts is saying, okay, is this worth a grade? Another thing to ask is how can I simplify this? Because online courses have this, um, they have this propensity to like uh, proliferate graded items um, and some of that is just because of the way the technology works. So thinking about whether or not it needs to be graded, and then how can I automate this? A lot of quizzes can be automated, automated grading. You know, if, they're, if they're good multiple choice quizzes, um, they can be very, very valuable uh, to students. Um, so really spend most of your time in a scaffolding, enabling, interacting mindset and probably I'd say no more than 20% of your time actually trying to think of what kind of percentage you're going to put on a, put on an assignment. Your students are going to benefit from that. And the second with grading, retain high expectations, communicate high expectations to your students, expect more and you'll get it. High expectations are important for everyone, for the poorly prepared, for those unwilling to exert themselves and for the bright and well-motivated expecting students to perform well becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it is so true. And one of those, I'm going to jump down to the last little bullet there, is returning ungradable papers. So one of the things I've noticed is that myself and my colleagues can spend inordinate amount of time on grading papers that are below uh, sufficient, where students have not put the energy into the work. Those are the papers that take the longest or projects take the longest to grade. Um, and a lot of times I'll just... I'll send them back and I'll say, this is not, this is not gradable yet. So you've got two days and it'll have this kind of deduction, or if you get it within this time, it won't have a deduction, lights a fire under their pants. And, um, and then I get back something that is going to take me like half the time to grade. I want to see them put in the work. I'm not, I don't want to put in a bunch of extra work because um, they're not trying. So the third one is really prioritizing being prompt. And let me give you some tips for how to, how to make your grading efficient. Get clear on your goals before grading. I'll actually write, the, write it down and say it out loud. My goal in grading this assignment is for this. So it's not for, for this. It's, it's narrow. It's more focused. It's very purposeful. That shifts my mindset right at the beginning. So writing it out, saying it out loud really helps me focus. And then I set a countdown timer. If I look at these and I say, okay, listen, I've got, I've got family. I've got other responsibilities. Uh, I have uh, 15 students. I have, uh, you know, four hours set aside for grading. I do the math. I set a countdown timer. And that's how much time I give myself on each paper. Countdown timers, um, they might create a little anxiety at the beginning for you, uh, but it's really worth it because it shifts your mind about time. Uh, I wish I could remember the name of the principle, but there's a principle that like basically the work that you have is going to like, if, if you have 10 hours and you have this project, uh, your, your project is going to fill up that 10 hours and then probably try to exceed it. With a countdown timer, you tame that psychological reality. You help yourself think more efficiently. And in that space, within that constraint, you get creative. You start thinking of ways to simplify your grading, to be more effective, to do more with uh, maybe less time. The third thing I'd say is develop a workflow. So a great example, I was talking with one of our professors who gives the best feedback on discussions when he's interacting with students. And um, he said, yeah, well, this is what it looks like for me. I will I'll take a group of students and I will work through them for with my countdown timer for a certain amount of time. And then I, I get up and I go for a walk. And during that walk, it might be me thinking about something totally different, or it might be me thinking about the topic and how I might be able to bring myself in a better way to the next group. Uh, so create a workflow rubrics, again, rubrics, rubrics, rubrics. I can't, uh, I can't uh, overemphasize how much that's going to help you be efficient to think clearly, to be less subjective, more consistent with student grading. Uh, when you get tired, or if you run into a student who's problematic, 
that rubric is going to hold you accountable to using the same standards that you use on, with all the other students or when you were feeling fresh. So rubrics are great for you, uh, but rubrics are also great for the student because they're giving them criteria on what a good assignment looks like. And then again, returning ungradable papers.